G'day viewers, welcome to another super cool repair video from the Goat Shed. Now today we're working on a Bowie Beach Club Bingo from 1953. And some of our viewers in the past have asked us about doing the clutches on these machines. Well, we have the mixer unit here, we've got to take that out. And, and we have the search wipers there on the control unit. So we're about to remove that. Now, today it's 26 degrees Celsius, which is about 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, now, we haven't done one of these for quite a while, so one of the first things we're going to have to do is remove this pin from here, and that will split these two units, or so it seems to us anyway. Now, once we do that, we'll be able to remove that mixer unit in its entirety. We think we're just loosening a couple of things because it's actually not working properly. This particular cam up here is not not working. Um, you've got to unhook that, unlatch that, and you can spin those cams around. But this one, it won't do that. It's locking up, and we don't know why. We're going to have to have a look at that too. All right. So so far we've put a new fuse block in this. Now that, have a look at that, that is a genuine Bally fuse holder. I bought that last year at the York show of a, a, an old guy, he was, oh God, he would have been in his 80s. He was a vendor there and um, he had a, a whole heap of bingo stuff. So what we're going to do now, um, well, we'll show you what we've got to do to get this out, okay? So what we discovered while removing this, that this pin here we originally thought we were going to have to remove, we didn't have to remove that. It turned out that this is a coupling, so you can see the uh, cutaway in the shaft there, and just down in there there's the pin, there it is there, just sits in there, and so there's where that mix a shaft fits in there and goes in like that into the frame all we had to do was remove the that's the latching mechanism for the mixer the solenoid just got a switch and the latching arm remove that and we had to take the search well, I don't know what, what you call that we had to take that off off the frame and now we can get at, not only at the mixer unit, which we have a problem with or had, we've fixed that, I'll show you in a sec. Now we can remove the rest of this. So it's now going to be a matter of uh, taking this all apart. So all this stuff comes off here. Got to undo some screws over here. And anyway, we'll go through it and to get at the the clutches which are, are located in in behind up in here a bit hard to see and there's two lots of that tooth wheel there's one on the top and one down below there you can see the both of them there now so that'll all come apart we'll get that on the bench it's, it's a big job you know this bingos are extremely time consuming you know the other thing we've found there's all these wires broken away or cut away I should say now from what we can work out there they are there get a better look at them there's one two three I thought there was a fourth it may be a fourth one in there one two three four that's to do with the extra ball by the look of it so we'll have to have a look and see what doesn't work so in other words, the operators cut those away. That's done on purpose. This step unit here is the extra ball. We've gone through all the step units previously on this game. And we also previously did a video on this on the replay counter. Remember that was the one that wouldn't carry over? Well, that's it all back in the machine now. Now let me show you something else. So this is the frame that the mixers sit in. And you might remember earlier on we showed you how the, the top mixer it sits in the game like like this 
here's the that's where the the uh, solenoid goes for the mixer reset and it, it hooks on to that arm there you know they've got the hole in the top of the plunger and that'll go back into the coil and onto the coil that's where the coil stop loops what we found with this is that remember it sat in like that we're getting this top mixer unit which I think is mixer 4 um, it would not rotate now what we discovered you've got these operating arms here now you push down, push down that that's two, spr two springs that one they latch forward and this reset bar will unlock I'll do it again because I moved the camera reset solenoid pulls in and they go back what we discovered was these ones were moving laterally these two and this is the one we're having trouble with so what it was there's, there's supposed to be a clip on each side of that one there and one here now what they've done they've taken a clip off this one and put it on this one but you were getting lateral movement so that one was actually this one I should say was falling down well this is our belief anyway and stopping it from operating and turning around we'll soon know when we put it back in the machine but we've we've gone through and cleaned all that with kerosene and uh, and it looks pretty good now doesn't it it's, it was a bit grotty with oil and everything like that so I don't know what you call that you probably call that the the mixer frame I guess but that's a pretty simple mechanism but hopefully we've figured that out and uh, be able to uh, try that when we put it all back together there's still quite a lot of work to do on this machine we've previously have done all the step units on this and this is that one with that rotary stepper inside there that's show, we showed that in an earlier video uh, these are all your a lot of the, the what they call the five bank relays you've got the the start relay here this is the um, what do they call it the anti cheap relay um, this machine is going into tilt when we turn it on so we've got to got to figure out why we'll get that sorted out so still quite a lot of work to do on this bingo game 1953 beach club you know it's a very very pretty game I can't show you the back glass at the moment we've we've got that inside to keep it safe but it's got a very pretty play feel what you can see a little bit of it there so 70 years old it's not doing too bad so hopefully we'll be able to bring this game back to life oh look at that great great shot of the goat shed sign through the cabinet of the uh, of the actual game itself all right let's get back to work and start pulling the um, search unit apart so we can do the clutches that part we're looking at there that's the part that sat on top of the um, the mixer shaft that we took off that's a double step mech for the odds isn't it Spank? so now we're going to remove this one here this is called the control unit spotting disc so it's just going to take that out so we're going to get in and remove those now so here we go first up we're going to have to remove that nut off the top we'll remove the goat too and the goat yeah there Now you can see that's a spring, a cup under that and a spring there to keep pressure downwards. So we'll just remove that. Alright, that's almost off. Oh, a little bit to go yet. Okay, with the nut off we can now take that off as one unit. There we go, now we now next up, you've got to take that off, slide that out. Now, now that's we'll, the... We'll take all this wire for continuation. 
situation. These are the things that are important. Now, look, see, that's had a, a repair there done at some point in time. Yeah. And very critical when you put these back in, we check the continuity across all the fingers from the common this, to make this sure. This the cleaner one. They were always missing, but yeah. Yeah, they are. that's got the, it cleans the. Cleans the rivets. The rivets. Now, we, we do anyway. each one of those rivets represents a number in the back glass. Not, not on this oh, one. not on this one, sorry. It's that's a spot and disc that's the control unit disc. This, yeah. this just gives you all features and stuff. That turns different stuff on and off. Yeah. But if but if that was that, that would be different numbers on the yeah. as per this one and you on the back glass. That one's zero on the go five and lots of five. And they've got little marks on them. So this has got green. Yeah. So that's sort of the starting point. This one probably hasn't got the numbers on it. This one is should. Okay. Because that doesn't have to do with this. So. And there's the mixer unit. It's got numbers on it as well. So you can refer yeah. to things in the schematic. I mean they were pretty methodical even you know all those years ago, 70 yeah, odd years ago. One. Mix of four I think is that one, that, that'll cut. So next up we've got to take two screws out, one over there on the left and one just there on the right. Once again pretty straightforward stuff. Sometimes those screws get a bit tight, thankfully oh, these ones. You've got to bash them out. Yeah, we, we had a bingo not long ago where we had to do that. We had to get the um, impact screwdriver and whack them out. Now see that? That's just going to lift up and off and we're just going to... I'm going to have a quick look at see if any wires. Now see, this, this is where your nightmares can begin. You know, you get a broken wire in there. Especially that's your common, so you've got to be very... Things careful. won't work. Now what Graham was just saying, that's your that's your common feed just there, that that mm -hmm. wire with the I should get me pointed, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. Alright, now we've got to start pulling stuff apart. Right now, see that big cog there? We just push those switches out the road, we're gonna lift that off. That's one side of the clutch. So that's and now that's what we've got to change. This is what we've got to change, this clutch. Leather clutch. It's stuffed. You can see how shiny it is. Look at that, that won't, that's had it. And that's your plate. And then that's the clutch plate. Okay, so the so clutch. The smooth side goes to the plate and the rough side goes to the metal. That's got a spin. So, I can go get a, um, a new washer and explain that to you. Might be the idea. Okay, that's a brand new old stock clutch washer. You've got your shiny side and you've got your rough side. Well, you've got to soak them um, for an hour or so in uh, linseed oil or um, whatever's appropriate. So, the shiny side goes to the metal. That's all oiled up. Goes to the to the cog side. And um, once we clean everything up, we'll be doing that. We just got to take this off, that off. And then uh, we can work on the next one, the same situation. We've got to take that and move this one up. But this is where the trouble comes. Sometimes you can't get it off the top of this um, this, this length here. So we've got to make other arrangements. And sometimes you've got to drop the motor. And it's a lot of lot of hassles. Doesn't look like we're going to have that problem here, though, does it? Yeah, we don't know. Sometimes it's really deceiving. Right, so we've laid those parts out. Now there's this piece to come off. Yeah, it's got a groove in it, so it can only go one way. There's a groove that goes down the middle there. Yep, see those in the shaft. The slot, there it is, and there's a little. So you, you can't go wrong, you don't put it in one way. But we're going to clean all this up and probably give it a quick buff just to make it nice and pretty. So we've got to take this off next, and that one off. And then, that, and then we can slide that off and do the same. Ah, yes. Okay. So there's just the screws holding that. Um, they're the wire contact fingers. Just holding those down. Well, you've got to make sure they're in the right groove. Yeah, when you put them back, yeah. And um, a little bit of pressure, not, not too much pressure. And that's What's adjustable by that nut, the pressure, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Which we'll do when we put everything back together. Just to get that out the way. It looks a mess, but it all sort of comes back together. Now there's two screws under here, and they're um for those brackets. I'll for this hold this coil bracket on. Oh right, okay, there you go. And um, they're oil on guarded, so you can actually move it left and right if need be to adjust. 
Oh, yeah, that's the latch for the uh, where the fits into the gear tooth. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. They're, they're important adjustments. Well, they're, um, easy to get out, but they can be a pain to put back in. What we've done here, we've put everything on the top. Now, then, everything above here, which we've got off, is in that container. Container, and then everything below here is in this container, and they're metallic. So even if we bump them, hopefully we won't lose. So we've got that out the road now. Now here we go again, we can lift this off. Now you notice there's no washer under this one, it's under here. And the other thing you've got to be careful of, you've got to, as you take all these parts off, you've got to make sure there's no washers to keep things apart from each other. So now we do the same thing, hopefully these screws are going to come loose. which are um, very surprising they are. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. But as we said, the biggest trouble is getting this off the end of the shaft. So that comes... So that's just a matter of taking those two screws. Are you really replicating what we did on the... On the top. On the control unit one. Yeah, very similar units. The only difference is this one's for all the pays. This is the all the rivets that represent all the... See what we might have to undo the harness off the bracket here. Oh, okay. All right. Ah, oh, yeah, that big black thing. Yeah, yeah right here. a bit more length. Okay. That part I'm focusing in on now. That's the the common feed connection. Now we had one of those. You can see the the shape of them. We had one of those broken not that long ago. Probably in the last twelve months or so. And believe it or not, Graham has those new old stock in a plastic bag with the Bally part number on it. It wasn't too hard to change. So with that broken, nothing would work on that particular unit. Interesting, eh? Hey? All right, so we were right. We couldn't lift this up over the shaft. There wasn't enough in the cable. So we got all the cable, uh, well, I don't know what you call them, the things that hold cable clips out. There's two or three of those. Now what we've got to do, we've taken all the, the we've undone the switch stack off the control unit. That's only a couple of screws. Now we're just going to unsolder the wire off the motor. That's what he's doing now. And we think we should be pretty well good to go. Now some people with these, they, um, they put the door, take the whole door off, I think, Graham was just saying. I don't think we've ever done that, have we? No. We, we just don't see enough bingos, you know, like I guess, you know, anyone that is familiar with these may say, oh, you're going about it the wrong way. Well, you know, that's quite possible. There's no argument about that, but this is the way we feel going forward is the way to go. Yeah, maybe we should take the back door off. I, I don't know. For a restoration, you probably would. Yeah, but I highly doubt we'll be ever restoring a bingo. Oh, yeah. um, as I said earlier, they just consume so much time. You know, you could be doing four pinballs to one bingo. That's the trouble. That's what we you know, just put the air in every now and then. So once he gets this off, we should be reasonably good to go. So there's a screw on each side of this bracket that had to come out. Now I've unsoldered the wires and out she comes. Holus bolus. There you go. And that's what we want. Now we're going to go and put that on the bench and we'll work on that because this is where you've got to be really careful about if there's a, a washer in between, you know, yeah. a thin washer can make a big difference. Yeah. And they, We've got about three or four washers in here we might change while we've got it out. Yeah, the, the other clutch washers. Oh, yeah, well, we're, we're going to do those as well, so... Mm, might as well. Well, yeah. we've got it out, yeah. yeah. And they'll probably clean the wooden caro as well. Hmm. All right, so... I'll clean the shaft right up. That's how you get it out. Probably convoluted, but... We got there. We got there, yeah, that's exactly right. Right, so here's the unit out on the bench now. We'll take it out onto the operating table and get stuck into that there's there's the clutch one of the clutch washers we wanted to get out here the other one under here 
but there are, we'll, we'll change the whole lot while we've got it out of course. Notice the cam, so there's a top part of the cam and then you've got like a, if that was a got load pinball machine, these studs from the top part of the cam would be level B, so that would be level A, level B and level C, but I don't think they think that way in Bali, maybe, maybe not. Alright, so let's take that out and pull it all apart now. Sounds like fun. Now, to get this apart, there's a pin that's got to come out, and it's this pin here. So we'll that collar's got to come off. Now, we'll turn it around so we can get that in the right spot. Now, to work on these things, you do need the right tools. So, a few years ago, we invested in these uh, Stanley uh, Imperial size um, coal chisel and punch set. And the two main ones you use are 1 16th and 1 8th that we've found. Um, so this pin looks like it'll be about a 1/8, so select your weapon, we'll take the 1/8 the out, and uh, we'll be good to go then. Let's have a quick look. Yep, yeah, that's what it'll be, a 1/8. Alright. Okay, so we've got the punch, and we've started it. Now notice we've got the block of wood under there, as close as we can to the collar, to give it plenty of support. We're not going to knock the pin all the way out, I don't think. No, we've got to, Kim, because it's going to... Oh, oh no, we're no, going to no, have no. to, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, 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 we won't. We won't. Yeah. And there's a bit of spring tension, so the compression spring up the end there, so it's all going to move over to the right a little bit. But we had to. But that's no big deal. Yeah, that, that pin's got, he's got that out. Now, that's just a, a one-eighth roll pin. There it is. Well, where is it? There, somewhere. Oh, there it is. Now, when I was in the USA last year, I actually bought a number of those. So what he'll do now, we can we can slide that whole cam assembly off. Now, this is where you've got to be careful. See, it's split in two. See that? It's okay. We took plenty of photos. <laughs> did you drop something, did you? No, just the washer. Thing. Right. See how that's split in two? So... There's a, a clutch washer on the end and a plate. Yep. Now you just got to watch those plates. See the way that points? It's got little little buds on it. All right. Now that's something that you've got to watch out for. And then the other thing you've got to watch out for is um, any small washers or anything like that. All right. Well, let's carry on with this. So this is an interesting lesson. We're, we're all learning as we go today because we haven't done one for so long. A few people asked, would we do this? I originally said, no, we probably won't, but okay, here you go. So I hope you appreciate our time. It's got two, um, three, I think. Now, see what we do. We lay the parts out of the order. They come off just to, you know, make it a little bit easier when you put it back together. So you just do it back in the reverse order. Now, a lot of this is common sense. But once again, if you haven't done it before, take some photos, for goodness sake. I guess if you're doing this every day, you could do it blindfolded. I can recall, I think it was back in about 2018, I went over to the Pacific Pinball Museum in Alameda, there, and there was a bingo machine there, and all the parts were just in a bucket. The fellow was fixing it up, and I said to one of the guys, I said, wow, I said, Someone must know their bingos, and yeah, apparently it's um, Phil from CDYN. He pulled it apart, and he knew how to put it back together, so there you go. I, I guess he's got a lot of experience. All right, now we've got to start these clutch washers. Um, they're soaking at the moment. Here they are over here, just soaking away in that little top of that container. Soak them with oil. You've got to do that. Right. Now, the things you find when you're doing these old games. So, once we got all this apart, we started having a close look. And see this, this little lug here? Well, that hits a switch as the cam turns around. And it runs... 
how, do, how am I going to show you this? Well, the motor bolts on there, it's a bit hard to see there, but what was happening, this shaft was hitting these nuts. So it was in too close. Quite like that. Quite like that. Now, obviously, that's not going to work, and we're, we're puzzled how this ever worked. What we discovered was that there's two styles of motors. So, someone has obviously changed the motor on this. Yeah, the motor's the same, the gearbox is different. On the, no. Sorry, the, the, the gearbox on the control unit at some stage. Now, see, that's a longer shaft, and if you look, maybe, yeah, you should be able to get the picture there. That's a shorter shaft. So, therefore, yeah. when this, fits, when on this the fits on, where it lines up with the hole, the pin, the roll pin, it was totally this, different. This is going to be further out that way. Now, we put this heat on there, and um, is it going to go on there? Do we check that? It'll go on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to put this gearbox on. We'll put the pin through there, and we'll take this newer motor and bolt it on. That should be good. Because we're not sure if the other motor we've got works. We actually pulled it apart and started overhauling it. But we thought, oh, hang on, we've got this yeah. fairly new looking motor here. But we can put that back together and use it on another machine one day. So, it just goes to show, you know, like, by pulling something apart, what you discover. But we just don't know how this ever worked. We have no idea, because that cam could not do a full rotation. It would get jammed. I think, I think what would have been happening is forced its way past. No, I think it would have stuck Kim and, and the actual um, clutch was 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 driving the rest of it. Yeah, possibly. So this yeah. would this would have been staying still. Yeah. Yeah, maybe something like And and then actually this was bent. Yeah. So we have straightened it up. Someone, someone's tried to compensate for it. Yeah. And and the switch, they've modified the switch that hits that that lug, yeah. so we might have to well, make some few adjustments yeah. there. I think it'll be right. But but that's what we found. It's pretty bizarre, eh? Mm. Well, we thought so anyway. So yeah. we'll just carry on with this. So we've now completed the job of fitting the new gearbox with the longer shaft on it, and you can see the result here. So where previously this stud was riding up against these nuts and it wouldn't let it pass this is because the the shaft coming out of the motor was too short there must be a few different styles for different machines uh, it wasn't without too uh, a bit of trouble we had to uh, we've changed over the motor uh, the first motor we went to, to use the common was broken on it and then we had a little bit of other trouble with it. Nothing too dramatic. But we got there in the end. Now comes the part of assembling all the clutches back onto the machine. Now all the parts have been cleaned. And once again, let's have a quick look at all these parts here in a row. Uh, there they all are there. Now the first part that's going to go back onto it is that gear here. So all we're going to do, that's got a like a, a bushing or bearing on it. We've given that a bit of a clean and we're going to put that back together. And I don't know um, what we'll do here. I was thinking we might put a bit of oil along here, but you know, Graham says we probably don't really need to do that. So the other side of this is where a clutch rubs up against one of the leather clutches. So all the leather clutches have been soaking in um, oil overnight. Mm. So we'll just slide this back on now from the other end. Well, don't forget to put that bearing back in if you're working on it. Yeah, we just were pointing out that bearing. Yeah. There it goes. That sits there. Now the next job is, is to put a new clutch washer on. The rough bit goes against the metal. So remember we were talking about a smooth and a rough bit on the leather clutch washer. The rough bit goes against the metal to bite. And then the one with the three buttons goes against the, the washer. And that's then. got three studs on it. Just show up, slow up there, Graham, for a second. Yep. See the studs, you can see them there, here they are. They go facing the clutch, those studs. And you spin it around till the, the three holes go in. 
Huh. There's a spring goes on there next. Then there's another, like a, I don't know what you call this. Yeah, it looks looks like a nut. Yeah. Some sort of separator. Now remember there's a groove running along this shaft, so this part we're going to put in now has got the little lip in it. Bit lower, please. There it is there. That's got to fit in the groove. Yeah. It won't go on if you don't get it in. So that's done. Sort of sits in the spring. All right. Now you put the washer, clutch washer on. Now we're going to put the clutch washer on. So I guess the rough side goes, goes against that side. Okay. And so that's the smooth side goes against the metal. So this is sort of around the other way this time. The the metal bits are sticking out there. And that's the smooth side. And you turn that until you can feel it go into the holes, which it there it is. See so you. Yeah, so those leather clutches have the holes in them and that's got to fall into those holes. Yep. Now, if we have a little look at this. Now this hasn't got the groove in it because this actually spins on the clutches. Yeah, this, this spins on the clutches, as Graham just said, so there's no no grooved bit here. This is just part of the cam mech. Okay, we've just sort of cleaned all the cams as best we can and we'll slide that straight back onto the shaft. There it is, done. You just sort of saw that spring find its own way home then? Yep. Right. So we keep going. And remember we've got all these parts laid out in order. So next is a clutch washer. So this one's going under metal, so that's going to be the rough side. Facing. Now remember these have got the groove in it as well. So you've got to get it in the right spot. Yep. Now you can turn that. Right, they're in the holes. Just bring that down there, right here. Now that's in the groove and what he did, he turned the leather clutch so it fell into the holes. And just reiterating, could you pass me one of those, uh, the plates, no, the plate. Yep. This is the holes we're talking about, or, whoops, around the other way. And, and, and the three holes and the three down. holes line up. Makes sense? Yep. Okay, as long as you yeah, understand that, that. The shiny side goes plate down, down onto the plate like yeah, that. The shiny side goes onto the plate. The and rough so, side goes to the clutch. So that's, that's the bit that grabs the metal. Yeah, right that's here. That's right. That's the friction clutch. Yeah. And this is what these are, people. These are a friction clutch. Now, these we used extensively in a lot of electromechanical things, bingos and pinballs aside. They weren't used in too many pinballs, but Midway used them in score reels. If anyone's been familiar with those Midway games, they use them in their score reels. So this is just all a matter of reassembling everything, taking your time to get it right. There's the second lot. Right now we've got to clean these up, so we'll be a minute or so. Then we'll get back into it. So we've got all these parts cleaned now and ready to go back in. Just one thing I want to point out to you, you'll see a clutch washer here, and then we've got a plate with a little buds on them. Then we've got a washer with, well, just a washer. And then we've got a plate with no buds on it. See that? So that goes on there, goes in between. You'll see that when we put it on in a moment. So that's why it's important that you very, very carefully, when you pull these apart, put them, lay it out so you know how it goes. So once again, rough side to the metal, which is, and the smooth side to the plate to fit in the little lugs. There it goes. Now, Remember, this is the side with the big hole in it. So he's carefully just putting it all on. Here goes the big gear on. 
done. Now, on goes. Here comes the fun. Now we've got to compress this and punch it. So there's a hole down here somewhere. Okay, so there's the hole. It's right here at the top almost. So I'm going to give him a hand now, and this is how we're going to do it. So we're still recording, and we'll have a look. Get that collar. Where's that hole? There it is. Well. So we just got to get a punch now. Hope he hurries up because it hurts my fingers. Now we'll bring that block of wood up to give us a bit more stability. Beautiful. Not too bad, eh? I think we need to. Do we need to punch that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah. I just want to get, get it, it around over yeah. the top a bit. Yeah. So he's just spinning the fan round now to bring it round. Oh, look at that psychedelic effect there with the yellow punch hitting the the cams. Super cool. See when we make a video, we make sure you enjoy it. Beautiful. It's in. Okay. Yep, he's happy with that. Okay. So we just used a bigger punch to drift that pin in. So we used a, a, a quarter inch punch in that yeah. instance. And you see, um, now, now the cam spin freely with a bit of... Can't see, just, yeah. Just a little bit of grab. And so you don't, you don't care about where you put it on because what's going to happen is that you'll see these little grooves here. Right, so when you've got a, a latching um, coil here, basically, so when it turns, it'll latch onto here, same as this one, you've got the groove here. Yeah, they fall into place, is that they, what you... They fall into place, and so that's home, so you, yeah. don't, you don't need to put it on a special way. When In other words, there's no timing involved, they'll, no. they'll, they'll find their own way home. Yeah. So that's, that looks pretty good, actually. It's really clever, these bingos, I mean, they're, they're just like... As I mentioned earlier, this is a 70 year old game. Yeah. You know, we didn't expect to find the incorrect gearbox in there with the wrong shaft in it. I mean, mm. this is but this is the things you get faced with when you do these things. I've just got to give this a quick clean, get another, another what are, they're the ones that we've replaced so far. How many clutch washes have we done? One, two, three, four, five. We've got no six now. I've got so it's going to be six. And we've got the mixer unit to go to. Yeah, there's going to be probably eight in that, I think. Yeah, right, okay. So all said and done, when you break it down, you've got two clusters of eight cams, and there, that's where the joint is there, they're clutched together. So the complexity is that the cams really don't have to come apart, it's just the clusters do, and then you're clutching them together. Now, that's what a friction clutch does. Now, the other thing, and Bally also um, did this in a few of their pinball machines with a um, slightly different clutch arrangement, but they did it in um, what was King Tut, and apparently you can't buy those parts, yeah, but yeah. it's simply a, a clutch spring with a nylon hub, and they wear and bit, a bit of metal in there and they wear out. They didn't do it for long. So we've now just got to put the last few bits on this and we're done. So it's it's complicated, but it's not difficult. And, you know, we haven't done one of these for a long while ourselves, so we've got to sit back and think about it as well. You know, these things are, uh, how would I say, uh, you know, we might see... This year we've seen a couple of bingos, but 
you know, we may not see one for 12 months and you, you lose practice. It's a bit different than, you know, player units in Gottlieb's and we can do them sort of with our hands tied behind our back. But these things, we've got to go a bit slower. So it does take time. If you're going to take this job on, be prepared. Take plenty of photos. Yeah, to take plenty of photos and to be very, very patient. And to put it back together, you really need two people unless we took the back door off. Now, maybe next time we do one, what do you reckon? We'll take the yeah, back we'll door off. We'll give it a go. Yeah. Because I know a few of our friends in America have told us that that's what they do. Now, we're not going to be able to show you how this goes completely, how we're going to reassemble it, because I'm going to have to give Graham a hand to hold things out of the way. That's why I say it might be better to take the door off. But this job is now complete. All I've got to do is reassemble it. So that means fitting it back on and screwing it back to the frame and, and fitting the parts all to it. We're going to also have to clean all the um, the contact rivets with a, uh, well, I guess what we'll use is a scotch pry. done that before. And then there's some adjustments that have to be made. We will go through the adjustments with yeah. you for the latches. While, and while the scams are not there, we can go through heaps of switches that you couldn't really get to before, which is going to make life easier. Cleaning them. Cleaning and adjusting and just checking that there's no pads missing or spinning or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So who's bored yet, viewers? You ask for it. Yeah. I know. I know a lot of you aren't going to watch this video. We may well be wasting our time, but seeing as people ask, we said we'll do what you ask. Yeah. Just had to be patient and wait. Now this this cog here is flopping around, and that's that's how it's supposed to be. It's got a another thing that fits on there that goes into these two tabs so if you don't get the two tabs properly you're going to have your pays not propane properly oh yeah that's on the wiper yep so yes. this, is, this is on your search disc okay well we'll then give it a to show that yeah so what he's talking about if he takes that black gear off once again you've got these two little bits here and a part fits into that I, th I think we won't show you that while it's out it might be easier so this is the the part that's got to fit in there I don't know you call it the spline there's one on each side so you can appreciate that we've now got got this and it's got to actually go and fit down in there and you've got to be able to, got to make sure you've got it in there it is and that's that's what you've got to do it is possible sometimes to not get it in right just spin it round if you're not sure you can even get a bit of a bit of paint and put on there and then slide it over and a bit of paint on the top there but in this case it's a bit easier because you can actually get it and there it's on bang all right that's what you've got to do that's that's how that part works now you'll notice <clears throat> that we sp we mentioned earlier about the fingers on here that have been repaired Okay, uh, I've put the 443 Dremel on each of those switch um, blade pads and cleaned those. You can see they've soldered on new switches on there. You can get those and, and you can pop rivet them on, but it's a bit of a bugger of a job. We're, we've, I think I mentioned we've buzzed out all these wires. Like, so you can see under there we've got a this is the common link here. Then we've got a yellow, red and green. We've buzzed them all out because they can break away from from here and that'll give you problems with like whatever it is. It might be scoring or... Remember I mentioned about the rivet plate that uh, a row of rivets represents a pay of numbers on the, on the back glass. So once you're happy with all that, you can then 
be confidently put it back in the machine. And there you go, there again, that's the, you don't see those a lot, that's the pad to, to, that wipes over the, um, the contact rivets. It's, that's pretty, pretty good. All right, well, let's just see where we're up to now. We've got, I think we've got the, um, the first, the cam sharp back in the machine. Let's go and have a look. All right, so we're making progress here. We've got the, um, the unit back in the game. That was just a matter of sliding it up through. getting their bracket lined up with the screw holes and putting them back in. Now we've cleaned all the all the switches on the control unit stack. But while we're putting it back together we have noticed one thing. There it is there. That latch is worn and it's going to need replacing. Now we think we have one of those otherwise we're going to have to file it down and try and repair it because bear in mind that goes in that falls into the tooth in there into those teeth now that probably indicates 70 years of wear so I guess we're not surprised too much about that you know you're going to find worn parts but remember the biggest problem we had with this was the cam not being lined up properly because the shaft was incorrect so we changed that gearbox out now this switch just here this one what they've done they would put a bracket in there to modify it to move it now we were able to take that modification out and put those two screws in the original holes that they were designed to go in and these little detent things here they work they're just one top one's got a switch on the back of it I think that's for the that goes in cahoots with this one it steps the timer a bit hard to see up there but yeah so yeah we're, we're coming along sort of quite nicely a little bit more to go looks like a real mess doesn't it the other thing we've done, we've put PBR grease on there. You can see the, the, the grease. We've just got to wipe a little bit of the excess off. So, all in all, it's all coming together nicely. So there's that part out of the machine now. As you can see, there's quite a deep, a deep groove in there. As we speak, Graham's looking through all the parts bin to see if we can find another one. Pretty sure we've got one. Worst case scenario is we could repair that. There's another angle of it. I mean, obviously, a part as old as this has lasted a long time. So, I guess the engineering of these games back in the day when you say 1953 was pretty good so we'll see what we can do with this now all right well we repaired that latch now we've just about got this whole thing back together but while we're on the subject of latches we've now found another one this is the mixer unit latch Oh no, this is the... the double, uh, sorry, the... Um, the double jump. Yeah, um, for the... Um, well, it double skips it, just so you get... It, it hooks in with this, okay? Yeah. With, and, and it double jumps at odds. Okay, but look at it, it's sticking really badly. Now, we've disconnected the spring on that. Oh, no, he's put the spring back on. Yeah. Now, the way to test things like this is not with the spring on. Always with it off. Now, look at that. It's really, really sticky. So we're going to pull that apart and fix that up. Well, um, the mixer unit's back in. We remember we had trouble with this one up here. It wouldn't uh, wouldn't spin. I'll hold it out, and it was getting jammed. Now it's fine. And the reason it was getting jammed um, was because there were clips missing off 
those arms. See those clips there? There's two on each one. You can sort of see that one there. Oh, that one. Where is it? Oh, I can't get my finger on it. It's a little bit newer looking. Alright, so we're, we've done that. We've only got to put that gear back on the top. So, um, oh, and we've just got to screw the um, all the switch stacks back down to the control unit. Put a couple of other things back on. But we won't bore you with that. Um, we're just going to take this apart. There, there are some adjustments that you need to do. But look, the book is really good. And that adjustment is to do with this, this latch up the back there. This one. We'll, we'll have to do that. But it's almost impossible to show you adjusting it. So every Bally book has that in it. And the other thing we did learn... Really, we went about this the wrong way, pulling it apart at first. What we should have done was just undone all the bolts and pulled the whole unit off. And the other thing we want you to be aware of, these, how am I going to show you that? Yeah, there's a groove just there. Can you see that groove? That groove has got to fit into the frame on the whole four. With the mixers. Mixers. And we didn't change the clutches on the mixers because yeah, they, were, they were biting quite well. So we were very, very happy with that. Um, and that latch is the thing that allows it to land cleanly on the rivets so that they all line up. Which is like you, you don't want them landing there. You don't want them landing there. You want them landing there. But, and but if they're out, you can't adjust it by you've got your, your latch. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about, the latch. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, but I put them back where they were. But it's, it's very easy to adjust. It's all right, people. Busy. Like I said earlier, you asked for it. There it is. Graham's done that whole clutch mechanism for you. We'll just go and repair that little latch we showed you. Oh, he's got the... There it is. It's, it's, all, it's all got hardened grease and graphite on it. It's right, okay. And is it a, uh, what do you call it? We're never uh, going to get that coil sleeve. Oh, it's a, a brass coil sleeve. So we're just going to clean it the best we can. Yeah, we'll clean that. But, but it's not worn. Good. And the latch arm itself's not worn. Yeah. Okay. Clean, clean those switches those there. Those switches. They look a bit bent, don't they? No. I think I think it would be all right. But we've got to clean this, this arm too. It's... Rightio, okay. That's where that's... Well, we got that mech all fixed up, that latch. You can see the um, plunger is a lot cleaner than it was and it's all working quite well now. So that was something we really needed to do. Well, we hope people appreciate the time and effort we took to do this video. It's going to be quite long by the time we finished, over 50 minutes. But as I said, people asked for it before. I said I wasn't sure if we'd ever do it. But the opportunity came up, so we've carried that out. Now, we greatly appreciate if you give us the big thumbs up to our videos. Please subscribe to our channel. And also hit the bell for notifications when we have new stuff come up that's most important we're also currently on our youtube page which is the goat shed e and pinball repair specialists every day or two we're going to be highlighting a video we've previously done we realize we've got a number of new viewers and a number of new members on our page so that will help them get a bit of an idea of some of the videos that we, we've done in the past. Can't remember exactly how long we've been doing videos now for, about just, just on four years it may well be, and we increase those day by day. So, Spanky thanks you once again, for and this has been another Goat Shed presentation. <laughs>